So I wanted to start a series because I recently bought this lathe that fell on its face um, and I could not find a lot of information about such a product. So this lathe is a Starbro Brock 185. Um, I bought it from a local shop, saw it on Craigslist. I've been looking for it for a while um, for a deal on a lathe, but uh, those things seem easier to uh, hear about than for actually finding. I'll show you a few things. So what you can see is the knobs, all of which I have attached on the top. All of those knobs broke off when the lathe took a face plant. So I pulled out, most of them were bent, some of them still are in enabled. Um, like this one actually seems in good shape. Before I bought the lathe, I gave it a pretty good look through. Uh, this top cover, as you can see, was off. And what happened is it actually sheared through all the bolts. The good thing about this lathe, it's heavy. The bad thing is it's also heavy. So you can see. All of the gears on the inside I went through, checked. Everything has all of its teeth. Um, still a few issues. If you can see in this section here. A couple of the bolts on the castings broke out the back, um, and I intend to just fix that with JB Weld. Essentially, let me make sure that you can see it. So the back of the casting, you can see that some of the metal is damaged, and I intend to JB Weld and tap um, and reset that. So. A couple of things about this lathe that were appealing is it has a, oh, it's actually on that side, it has the ability to stop, start, and reverse from a um, selector. And you'll see I probably don't know a lot of the words now, but I'll be getting better at that. Um, on the face, the switch took a dive. And this isn't actually a problem. The biggest problem that this poses is I'm going to have to try and work out which wires to connect on the motor. And I'll show you that in a second. For the most part, all of the handles that I have, I found were just bent. And my plan here is to probably use these nubs um, on the lathe, get it going enough, and turn out new pieces like this. And on the other end, I'll actually physically attach um, a knob type piece. So it'll be a one piece thing in the future. Luckily, when the handles were broken off completely, I found it, found myself in a situation where I didn't even have to drill and pull things out. I simply used a cheap pick like this. And by working it in the counterclockwise direction, I got everything out. Another part of the deal was, originally I was supposed to get some lathe bits, but when I went to collect the lathe, they had been moving shop, so I didn't get any of the bits. And so what happened is I got a deal on this chuck. This is not the right chuck for this machine, um, and one of the pro projects for the future is going to be to make a backing plate uh, that works with this. One major downside to this lathe, there is not a lot of literature out there on Starbro lathes, and so this is probably going to be some of the more helpful information if somebody buys one. From there, let's drop down and take a look at what we have on the carriage.
And so here you can see several of the knobs. This one is usually a wheel type knob, um, much the same as the one that you'll see on the back there. That's gone missing. Cross slide knob had the back end knocked off of it. I think that one's going to be fairly easy to do as well. The forward and aft movement, the dial seems to work fine. I'm going to have to come up with a nub as well. And I checked out, for the most part, the machine's really good and tight. Um, besides falling on its face, it seemed to be okay. The... what else is there? A couple of minor knobs. Here you can see the black plastic knobs that came on everything. We'll probably go with something uh, integral so we don't have a distinct knob, unless somebody puts in the comments a good reason to keep that style. So right now for the tool post, I have what's the stock standard version. And it's interesting, I'll say that. It's not quite a quick disconnect, but it might be. Um, what I'm anticipating is you turn this, this slides up and you have that ability. So one thing I'd like to do, I saw a great movie, great video this morning on how to take some steel and make additional pieces like this. So that would definitely be good. Um, on the tailstock, check that out. It had no issues, unlike this tripod. Um, had no issues, landed up working quite well, forwards and backwards. Um, one thing I have learned is that these use an MT4 taper. Um, and I'm probably going to get a decent amount of flack based on the fact that I had been lifting it from the, the spindle. My disclaimer is I tried lifting it as close to that side as I could and everything would cause it to cant backwards or forwards when moving it. My original intention was to drive the trailer underneath my four post lift and use that. Um, it's the lifting mechanism, but when I got here I found out that the trailer is actually wider than the garage. So that's a problem. I'll be right back. On this side of the lathe you can see the through spindle that comes out of the end. You can also see the drip tray that was underneath the lathe. I do have the bases. There's one of them over there, the other one's already in my basement. The end home for this lathe is going to be in my basement. One thing I started looking into is this motor. It's an ASEA, which is a brand I found almost nothing about online. Um, used a couple forums, OWWM, and somebody gave me a, an idea on how to do the wiring, which is much appreciated. Um, this thing comes natively as a two-speed motor and what I'm probably going to do is just use one of the gears and rely on my VFD to do the speeding up or speeding down. My plan is to put it in the higher gear to start. If I find I don't have enough low end torque I'll end up switching to the lower gear. If anyone has any comments on that um, I'd appreciate that info. Still coming around. You can see that really there wasn't a lot of damage on the slate outside of the knobs in the front. Um, I looked over the ways. The ways are still in good shape. They are not world-class brand new lathe, but for the machine, for the price, uh, I'm doing quite well. Tailstock is as far to the side as I could get it, and the objective there is to try and counterbalance the headstock. And lastly, you can see this drive knob, sorry, drive switch. And from the front, you can, using either a pull or a push motion, it will select a gear. So right now, there's no wires to that. Um, that actually came off in the trailer when it got snagged on the come along. Other things, um, here I have an automa Automation Direct VFD that I plan to hook up. And I have a disconnect switch that I'm going to use before on the power side. 
So here is one of the bases, the other one sitting in my basement already. Um, and I will be making in another film a base that I'll be mounting the lathe under. Sorry, mounting under the lathe and I then plan to use that to move it to the basement. And I have a contractor coming with a bobcat this week, so my desire and objective is to get this thing ready to go and on the lathe, sorry, on the pallet, and so he can simply pick it up and take it to the back. And I'll be able to roll it in and then hopefully use the engine hoist to get it into the basement and set up. So that's it for now. I'm still trying to get an idea of if I want to put more time into YouTube videos. So I'd appreciate some feedback. Um, I already anticipate someone's going to say I need a better microphone and I would probably agree with that. Um, that's something I'm totally capable of doing, but I just wanted to see the reception first. And yeah, Starborough Lathe, Brock. At a face plant and I'm going to take you through the entire process in this in the next few films. Um, if I get sufficient interest I'll actually land up making a video about myself and some of the projects I've done but until I see a few good few subscribers I don't think the world really would be too interested. So stay tuned and more to come. Thanks.